Uh, today is going to be some vocabulary. What we're going to be looking at for the next two chapters is how things move. In particular, what we want to be able to do is predict how things move. If I tell you an object's initial speed, if I tell you how long it's moving for, if I tell you what it's accelerating at, can you tell me how fast it's going after 12 seconds, after 18 seconds, after 21 seconds? Uh, or can you tell me how far it's traveled in that time? So we're talking about something that all of you have sort of got an instinct for because you've traveled in vehicles, you've walked, you've run, you've moved. So today we're going to be dealing with uh, some vocabulary. The language of motion is what I call this. There are many words that are used when describing motion, but we have to be very fussy. We're going to use very specific words here in physics. Common words to describe motion include, well, distance, how far. There are some other words that sort of mean distance, but sort of don't. <coughs> There's something called displacement, which has to do with distance, but actually is different. Displacement is what we call a vector. It has magnitude and direction. Speed, how fast? There's another word, Julia, that sort of means speed, but it's the vector component, velocity. And almost always, you're going to notice we'll be talking about time because we live in a universe surrounded by time that moves through time. <clears throat> and so here is the first part. Sorry, I got to help myself to a cough candy. Here is the first part of what I don't like about this unit. I think they overemphasize the importance of having formal directions, but I'm stuck with what I got. So direction makes a difference. And I'm going to give you two cool sciency sounding words. Quantities that are measured or counted may have a magnitude That's a fancy word, Julia, for, uh, in, skip the next blank, but in the next line down, magnitude refers to the size or amount you're counting. How much money do you have in your pockets? That's a magnitude, whatever answer you gave me. What's your mass? That's a magnitude, whatever answer you gave me. What's the volume of that container? That's a magnitude, whatever answer you gave me. But there's a second quantity or qual uh, that properties can possess. They can also possess a direction. <clears throat> What's the speed on the low heat out here, 80 kilometers per hour? That's a magnitude. What's the velocity on the low heat, 80 kilometers per hour due west? there's the direction. You see the subtle difference there, Tyra? There's a bit more information there. Quantities that describe magnitude but have no direction are called, here's your new word of the day, I'm going to do it in red because it's important. Scalar quantities, S-C-A-L-A-R. Or you know what? Scalars with a plural S for short. In physics, we say that everything is either a scalar or something else. A scalar, Julie, has no direction. Your mass, what's your mass? 12 kilograms. To say 12 kilograms west doesn't even make any sense. Volume is a scalar. So some examples. Mass. Time is a scalar. Time has no direction. I saw this science fiction movie went, where they went back in time. No, we were dealing in Einstein's universe. Time moves in one way. It has no direction. It's a scalar. S 
speed is a scalar. We'll talk about when, how fast you're traveling is a vector and when it's a scalar, but speed is a scalar. Distance is a scalar. And there's a bunch more. Energy is a scalar. Work is a scalar. Voltage is a scalar. Uh, what else? Force is not a scalar. Force is a vector. Ah, it's a bunch. Volume is a scalar. Area is a scalar. I can come up with a bunch. Flux is a scalar. Take physics 12. Quantities, Rachel, that, that describe magnitude, size, but also include a direction are called, oh, I'm going to do this one in red too because it's an important word, vector quantities or just vectors for short. We say, Allison, in physics, everything is a scalar or a vector. And that becomes, in physics 11, and especially in physics 12, very important because the rules for doing mathematics or calculations with vectors are very different from the rules for doing mathematics or calculations with scalars. I'll give you an example right now. Pause the video. So you want some examples of some vectors? Um, Velocity, displacement, acceleration, it matters whether you're speeding up or slowing down, Force, current, momentum, uh, lots, I'm blank, oh, magnetic field, electric field, lots, but for now, don't need to worry about that, but I'm a nerd, I gotta throw them out there. So we have scalars and we have vectors. Uh, the two that you really wanna keep straight are that speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector. I wonder if there was some dumb easy way that I could remember that speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector. You know, if I was a good teacher, I'd probably come up with some dumb easy way for you to remember that speed is a scalar and velocity is a vector. You know what, I'm a terrible teacher. I got nothing to help you out with. You have to figure it out on your own. Distance. We don't like to write words out in physics. Too much work. So we're going to use symbols as abbreviations for words. A good symbol to use for distance, lowercase d, is a scalar quantity. quantity. Now, if I say distance, you all know what that means intuitively, but here is a formal definition. It describes the length of a path between two points or locations. You can't find a distance if you only have one point. You need to tell me where to start and where to stop. Example, oh, 5.2 meters. <coughs> Six point seven kilometers. Three point nine centimeters. If you want to go imperial, you can go inches, feet. The standard unit of measure in science is the meter. So position. Okay. Now, position. Can you go back up here? and add position to the vectors, it's a vector. And we want to have a way to symbolically, Allison, tell you that something is a vector. Here's how we do it. To show that it has direction, look up. 
Don't write this down. I'm going to do it really big just so you can see. What's that a symbol for? Distance, scalar or vector? Scalar. To show if I wanted that to be the vector, what I do is I draw an arrow above it. Like it has, don't write that down yet, for a reason. To show that it has direction. If I see that, I would say that's a position or a displacement, but not a distance. However, Jasmine, over the years, we've gotten lazy, and it's just become kind of a half arrow, because you can do that without lifting your pencil. So position, its variable is D with the vector sign. You can write that down. Or sometimes they'll use the letter X with a vector sign if you're on graph paper, because if you're on graph paper, moving to the right, isn't that your X coordinate? It's a vector quantity. And it describes a specific point relative to a reference point. It says how far and what direction. So if I wanted to convert this from a distance to a position, 5.2 meters, square bracket, capital W, square bracket. What direction is a capital W on a compass? West. West. Or 6.7 kilometers. Uh, if I wanted to convey that we had moved backwards or to the left, or down, I need more information, but I could just do that. That's a direction. In the opposite direction of wherever we're starting from, but I need more information to tell you I need the context of the question. Or 1.3 meters. Here's a little physics 12 for you. 60 degrees north of west. Huh? North of what? North of what? North of what? One more time. North of what? To draw that, you would go west first, which is that way. What of west? What of west? I heard it. Someone said it. North of west. How many degrees? There. It, we're talking that way. This, this is how you can give directions in two dimensions. You say what of what and how many degrees. We're not going to do that in science 10, but how can I resist at least showing it to you? The SI, the System International, the standard world unit for both distance and position is the meter. We're down to two countries left that haven't gone metric the US and I think Burma. Two years ago there was three countries. I think the third country it was a country in Africa. They converted to metric finally. Metric's way better. So we often use the variable x with a vector bar to indicate position. A typical position could be positive 1.5 meters. By putting that positive in front, I'm saying you went to the right or east or up. I'd, I'd need to know more information, but once you gave me the context, I could tell you what direction we went from where we started. What if it had been negative? That would be to the left or down or backwards. Or, again, I need more information, but this is an easy way. So we'll either indicate direction, Alex, with uh, pluses and minuses, or if the question clearly includes north, south, east, and west, then we'll use north, south, east, and west. N-S-W-E. <coughs> this position has a magnitude, oh yeah, next page over, of 1.5 meters and a direction, positive, to show us on which side of the origin the object is located. An ob oh, the arrows are there to remind us to include the direction, positive or negative. 
An object's position is usually stated relative to an observer or reference point. Juliet, when in doubt, unless they say different, use a reference point of zero. Example, draw a little ball at a position of negative two meters on that little picture there. By saying that, it's fairly obvious now, I hope, Alex, that all of us will be drawing the same thing in the same location. Here's my origin. What would negative two meters mean? Go which direction? A little ball right there. You can color it in if you want to and draw it more than that, but there is a position vector of negative two meters. Is that okay, Ty? So far, so good? We'll go about five, ten more minutes, and I'll shut it off. Displacement. You can either write it as that for displacement, or you may see it written with a little triangle in front of it, and we'll talk about what that triangle means later. Uh, it's not red triangle D. Anybody know what you call that triangle in science? Delta. delta. Very nice. Good nerd move there. You would read that as delta D. Do you know what delta stands for? It's an abbreviation for the phrase change in. It's really saying change in position or location. It's a vector quantity. Did I need to tell you that? Well, if I put the arrows above it, that tells you, Andrea, that it's a vector. And it describes an object's change in position. <coughs> we use the symbol D with a vector bar for displacement. We use the symbol just plain old D, no vector bar, for distance. And the arrows are there to remind us to include the direction plus for moving to the right or forwards or positive or up or north, negative for moving backwards or left or west, or down, or south. Put your pencils down, look it up. Pause the video for a sec. So state the distance d and the displacement vector d. So d equals and displacement equals. Looking at these race cars and looking at the arrow above the race cars, which shows the directions that they travel, what's the distance that this race car traveled? I better count carefully. One, two, three. What distance did it travel? Four. Four what? I don't know whether this is meters or centimeters. Four. It does say meters? Oh, it does. Good. I can put units. What's its displacement? Now, I said, when in doubt, assume we start at zero, zero. But wait a minute. They're telling me I'm starting here. So my displacement is still going to be four, but how would I show that it was to the left? Because they didn't tell me I started at zero, so I can't assume that. If they had had like a little dotted line right here to show that that's where I'd started from or something like that, then Rachel maybe. Two more words. Initial is the fancy word for starting, and we're going to use a subscripted little i so if you see xi, that's my way of saying initial position. In fact, you know what? This is xi. F final is going to be, be our abbreviation for final position. We'll, again, Alex, write it as a little subscript. This would be x final. <coughs> Do I get into? Final minus initial, let me just double check. Nope. 